You're just in time for another airing of On Top and Hot. I'm your host, John Zadar, and this is the first weekend of August. It's the weekend of August 2nd. Now, you probably already know what I do on this show. I like to focus in on hot penny stocks. I trade penny stocks every week, every single day, from bell to bell. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on every market. There's no shortage of penny stocks, but I'm looking for a hot penny stock, a stock that has heat, potential to make us money, and dare I say, I've got one for us. This is New Ride Inc., ticker N-R-D-E. Now, I'm going to be completely honest and tell you, I am looking at this stock for one reason, because of the chart. The chart is not the sort of chart we normally look at. We look at breakout charts, charts in continuation. This chart is completely different. Ticker NRDE just came onto the market March 14th. Now, she was on the market before. She changed her ticker. We're going to go into all of that. But when she came onto the market on March 14th, she went into a downtrend immediately. And she's been in a downtrend for quite a while. And just here recently, she started climbing. And on Friday, she was catching momentum, definitely showing us that she has changed her trend. Well, when I was looking at this stock, the downtrend was revealing opportunities for when she goes into an uptrend. As far as I'm concerned, now that she's in an uptrend, we can start expecting repeatedly over and over again to be able to take gains of 30, 40, 50%. Sound like a stock you'd be interested in looking at? Great, because I'm interested in sharing it with you. NRDE. She finished today on Friday at two bucks and she was up almost 15%. Now she's on the OTC, the bottom tier, the pink, the riskiest tier because you don't get validated information down here. Their financials aren't looked at by a CPA. You don't get a lot of filings. Really, the only validated information you normally get with the pink are two green ticks over here I'm always harping to you about. Transfer agent verified and the other one is verified profile which we don't have here. Now, that's not a deal breaker. That doesn't mean I wouldn't trade it. It's just reassuring to have some validated information. So, let's talk about New Ride. She is in a state of flux right now because this used to be Lordstown Motors Corporation, which manufactured and sold Endurance, an electric full-size pickup truck for fleet customers in the United States but they're not in business anymore. That company is gone because they went bankrupt. Now, the company hasn't got any press releases for us to dive into, so we've got to get into their filings. I'm going to get most, if not all, of this information from their most current financial, which came out the first quarter of this year. So they tell us here that June of last year, Lordstown Motors entered into a Chapter 11 bankruptcy. They did this voluntarily. In connection with this bankruptcy, the company has ceased production and sales of its flagship vehicle, the Endurance, and all new programs that they had begun. Furthermore, the company continued its cost-cutting actions that include significant personnel reductions. On September of last year, the company entered into an asset purchase agreement with Land X to sell specified assets related to the design, production, and sale of the electric light duty vehicles for a total purchase price of $10.2 million. Now, here's the interesting part. The CEO, which got ousted out of this company, is the purchaser of the company's assets. He created a new company called Land X, and he has bought the facilities, and he's going to go forward with it. He is not giving up on this. But that's got nothing to do with New Ride. They tell us that New Ride may explore potential business opportunities now, including strategic alternatives or business combinations. But as of the date of this report, the company has neither entered into any definitive agreements with anybody, and they have not engaged in any discussions to do so either. In May, they did a reverse stock split of 1 in 15, brought the share count way down to about 16 million now. So it was back in September of last year they entered into the bankruptcy. And now they are out of it. They are completely out of it. It's a done deal. They emerged on March 5th. Upon emergence, they are getting a new board of directors. You need that for a new company. Now, what they're planning on doing since they're clear of this bankruptcy, these are their operations. One, resolving claims. 
filed in the bankruptcy. Two, prosecuting the Foxconn litigation. Three, pursuing, compromising, settling, or otherwise disposing of other retained causes of action of the company. And four, identifying potential transactions, including business combinations. Now, they mention here they're prosecuting Foxconn. They did a deal with Foxconn a while ago. I don't know the particulars of it, but it's all gone sour. June of last year, the company took legal action against Foxconn for fraudulent and torturous conduct, as well as breaches of their purchase agreement. And that is still ongoing right now. Don't know how long that's going to take to settle. So the company hasn't given us any ideas what sort of businesses they're looking for. Now, I've got to figure with a name like New Ride, it's got to have something to do with transportation. I don't know if it's mopeds and scooters or if it's going to be a delivery service or something like Uber. They haven't given us any hint. All we know is they've got a bucket of money and they're looking. They tell us here the company had cash and cash equivalents of approximately $19.7 million in cash and $87 million in cash equivalents, which is liquid. They can sell this stuff anytime they want, no problem, and get that cash. The company also has restricted cash of about $57 million as of March of this year, which represents cash reserves as required by the bankruptcy plan. So it looks like they got roughly $100 million to use, and they got $50 million in reserve. So we got lots of money here. But again, we don't have any clue what they're going to do. The only piece of news I found was them emerging out of bankruptcy. And it was a very short piece of news. So that's really all the information we've got except what's going on with that stock. Relative volume for the company, over the last 30 days, she's been averaging roughly 20,000 shares a day. Friday, she did about five times that much, kicking up to almost 100,000 shares. Share structure, as I told you, they just did a reverse stock split, brought the share count down to about 16 million. Now, I don't know what the float is. They don't tell us. They give us a number here, which could be right. That came out August 1st. They say the float is 14.8 million. Could be. The only thing we know for absolute sure, it can't be higher than the outstanding share count. So if this number is wrong, it won't be any higher than 16 million. But chances are that is correct, 14.8 million. Market cap for the company, we're roughly $28 million. Financials, they're not making anything. Everything has stopped. This is the money they were making as Lordstown. Coming down to the quarterlies, the brakes get hit hard and we are skidding, doing nothing. Jumping into that balance sheet, Looking at our cash and cash equivalents, now remember, we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. What they have in the bank, basically, is about $77.5 million. Total assets for the company is about $79 million, which means virtually all of their assets is cash. Total liabilities, uh, about half, $38 million, which should give us about $38 million in stockholder equity, but we don't. We get 7.7 .7 million. Why? I can't tell you exactly, but they brought in some extra numbers here which come into effect, and I don't know how they work them, except that they subtracted. So now we went from 38 million down to 7.7 .7 million, but we are still holding positive stockholder equity. Jumping on over to those disclosures. We've got an 8K that came out quite a while ago in May. This is actually telling us that they are bringing on a bunch of new directors, as we were reading about, and they're going to pay these directors $12,000 a year. <laughs> it's not very much, is it? No, that's just to retain their services and keep them loyal. Directors are supposed to be unbiased advice. They help guide the company. If they're invested in it, it's not going to be unbiased. So they're getting paid for their services, but not very much. And if there's any in-house problems amongst the management or something, directors are there to squelch that problem. The other filings we got here are Form 4s. All of these are the same. All of these are issuances of restricted shares to the new directors. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. 
And they can do that in a lot of different ways. And we're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them because that's a token sign. Something's going on here. Well, they can get them and lose them in a lot of different ways. And this is one of them. You come in here, it'll tell you up here in the corner who is purchasing those shares, who they are to the company, what date it happened on, and then right here, you'll get a code. If that code is a P, it's a purchase. If it's an S, it's a sale. That's what we're interested in. If it's any other letter, it's something else. And normally, I'm not real interested in that. And this, they actually tell us right down here, explanation represents a restricted stock unit award that vests in quarterly increments. So basically, these are shares they get that they can't do anything with right now. They're restricted, but they'll go active. They'll be registered down the road when we hit certain milestones, and then they'll be able to cash in on those. So that basically covers all the information for the company that we have. She has come out of bankruptcy. She's clean. She's got a bucket of money. She is looking at getting some deal, some business combination, and they're still chasing Foxtron, which they're supposed to get a lot of money out of that as well. So if we're looking at cash, the company's sitting well. If we're looking at the chart, things are getting better. And like I said, looking at this chart, what I see coming now are multiple opportunities to take gains of 20, 30, 40, 50%, or even more. Let's go take a look at that chart. You ready to look at New Ride with me? I got it all set up on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. All right, hot dog. We are looking at ticker NRDE. Got her opened up to a six month, four hour view. And that's actually the entire chart for the company. She got that new ticker and came on the market March 14th. The very next day, she hit a high of $2.80. And over the next couple of weeks, she went into a tailspin, dropping down to about a buck seventy, and then having this quick drop all the way down to eighty cents. But she popped right back up to home area, which has been between about a buck sixty-five and a buck seventy-five here. But look how many times she did this drop, over and over and over again. We got lots of big bars and long wicks. Now let's get an idea of how big these movements are. Looking at the biggest one. It fell down to 80 cents, came back home to about a buck 75. You're looking at over a hundred percent recovery there. Now let's look at one of the smaller ones, definitely smaller than most of them. She started here at about a buck 30 and went up just under a buck 80. So you're looking between 25 and 30%. So this small one gets us to about 30%. This big one was over a hundred percent. Well, we've got lots of them in the middle between the two. If I was to draw a line here, right there, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these big drops that all hit at a buck 15. So this is where you would have want to put in your standing order to buy these. When it drops down to a buck 15, even if it went lower, we're not worried about that. We want to catch as many as we can. So boom, you catch it at a buck 15. Soon as you buy them, you know she's probably going to come back home up here to about a buck 65 to a buck 70. So you would put in a standing sell order at the lower. You don't want to go to the ceiling, come underneath it, a buck 65. And you would have gotten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. You would have taken gains. Well, she was in a downtrend all of this time, but now she's in an uptrend. And where are those long wicks going? To the upside now. We had them at the very beginning. The very first two days, you can see she had long wicks. This was bouncing from about $2.30 up to $2.80. That's 50 cents. This one over here, she jumped from about a buck 70 up to 2.15, 45 cents. So we're looking at an average of 50 cent jumps just on a few bars that we can look at right now. So I'm thinking we're going to get all these big jumps way up high that come down real fast. And then she'll sit down here, maybe climbing slowly, and then we'll get another big bounce and then it'll come down real fast. So we find our floor. Let's say our floor is a buck 70, go up above it to a buck 80. You know, it's going to come to that point at least. And let's say she's hitting a high of 270, but she's hitting 250 over and over and over again. 
There you go. You put in a sell at 250. She hits that, you sell. As soon as you sell, put in another buy order down there on your floor, not the real floor, your higher floor. Wait for that ding. You've bought your shares. Put in your sell order on your ceiling, not the real ceiling, your softer ceiling down lower, and sell again. You should be able to catch multiple plays doing this, folks. If she does what she's doing here, and I think she's going to, bars at the front, bars in the back, all these bars in the middle. I think this is a good one to consider for that. So as you can see, she has been in a downtrend. She is now in an uptrend. All of our SMAs are climbing, though we don't have a 200-day SMA on our long chart. We did have a huge jump here, which has got all of our oscillators excited. Every single one of them has turned sharply and is climbing very, very quickly. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, our MACD, and our RSI, which has been sitting on a floor of 50 for a long time, bouncing on it. She has jumped very high right now, up to 65. It's coming down to our 20-day, one-hour view. So she is on an uptrend. It's very gentle. It's very gradual, but she is climbing and she's sitting there. We got a little bit of bounces, but not a whole lot of activity. We did have a big drop there all the way down to 85 cents, came back up to home and started off walking sideways again. And then on Friday, she wasn't doing anything for half the day. It wasn't until one o'clock in the afternoon that she decided to start moving at about a buck 75 and started pushing and got real strong at the end of the day, pushing up to 215. And it looks like she fell back to two bucks just at the end of the day. Our volume, it's been popcornish. We can see at the end of the day, we like to get strong volume, but it hasn't been pretty thick anywhere except Friday. Friday, it was steady through the whole day. We don't have any bald spots and it got very strong at the end of the day. Now we didn't see any new news or filings or catalysts. So I'm not sure why everybody's excited about it, but it's happening right now. And look at our oscillators. Holy cannoli. Every single one of them is shooting to the moon, folks. They all look very, very strong right now. Let's jump on down to our, uh, let's just go five day, 15 minute. Well, that's a nice pretty picture, isn't it? You can see how she is respecting that 200-day SMA. She sits on that firmly. That's her floor. That is at about a buck 72, but she comes down here. Her ceiling is up here. So, you know, somewhere around um, a buck 80, a buck 78, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, a buck 80. That's our soft floor right there. You could go lower, but she's climbing, so the floor is going to start to rise a little bit. As I said, she was following that right through the day on Friday. At 1 o'clock, she started to climb. Don't know why, but it's a beautiful climb. She's floating on her 9-day SMA. Look at how each corner of our bars is just sitting on that 9-day beautifully. That last bar, it's a little strong. She's pulling away from the nine day and she pushed way up here, but she did pull back right here. If you just follow across the top, she's up here at two bucks, which would just be perfectly in line with what she should be doing. God, look at our oscillators. They're still on fire, every single one of them. On our short, short term chart, our RSI is up to 74. This is looking good, folks. I like the fact that she's starting to climb now. We definitely can start to watch her. Let's see. I think we got to go all the way back to our four-hour view to get any sort of supports and resistances. We've got one right there. She's already cut through that. That's it, two bucks. That's where she's at right now. We got another one about right there. That's at 220. And then we've got one about right there. That one's at 240. So I'd start looking for bars that hit these resistances, that tag on them and then pull back abruptly. Those are going to be your ceilings. Like this hit 215 when it's at 220, that would be my ceiling. 215, she may not reach 220. This one's up here at 241. I'd probably come in at 235. Folks, think of the losses on the top and the bottom as your insurance. You've got to pay for insurance. And think of all the centerpieces of pie that you're going to get. If you can grab up two, three, four of these in a couple of months or a couple of weeks, it's money you didn't have to work for. You put plays in place that pay off. 
I'm liking this, folks. I think she is set up for a run right now, but I'm watching this for the bounces. I've got my floor down here at about a buck 80, and my ceiling, well, right now, it's at 215. But as these bounces get bigger, I'll find softer and softer ceilings. I hope that all makes sense to you, folks. So there's not a whole lot more due diligence you can do on New Ride. I did dive around in a lot of places. I couldn't find a lot of information, but of course you're welcome to go do it. I'm not telling you not to. I'm always telling you, do your own due diligence behind me because you never know. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. <laughs> we'll see you later, folks.